right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 147 pound division where we are going to have a new IBF champion, I do believe, right around the March time frame, and that is more than likely going to be Jerron Boots Ennis. Information has been coming out, good and bad news about Jerron Ennis. It appears that he will not be on a on a card, upcoming card, because people are refusing to fight the man. But seeing as another announcement has come out related to the current 150, uh, 145, 147 pound undisputed uh, champion, looks like they're going to have to run into boots anyway. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 147 pound division. One of the divisions that we really cover in depth on this channel, because you know, you can't cover every single solitary weight division in depth in boxing. So typically we stick to, for the conversations and videos, we stick to the traditional weight classes and the bigger, more high profile fights and fighters. and or we talk about fighters that are really, really, really good that we want to talk about and keep in the mind's eye of boxing fans. And that is the case of this video. We're going to talk about Jerron Boots Ennis and what is coming up for him because there was a word put out on Twitter. Shout out to Jay Shooter, who is uh, out there on Twitter land. I follow him on Twitter. Uh, and if you pay attention to Twitter, there is a lot of times very people that really do have very good sources that let information out. Well, it appears that Jerron Ennis uh, is not going to be on the card for David Benavides versus uh, Demetrius Andrade because unfortunately he is uh, entered into the boogeyman portion of his career while, where people do not want to fight him and they want to take the easier routes to uh, to get to their goals. And that includes people you think are going to beat him and people you don't think are going to beat him. He's in that scenario. However, there's, there is a, there is um there is uh, a sun on the horizon for Jerron Ennis because of announcement that was, or a word that is out coming from Derek James of Errol Spence Jr.'s camp about where their rematch is gonna take place with Terrence Crawford. Now, before I get into the details, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, Thank you so much for your continued support. It really makes a big difference to the channel when you support in the super thanks of the live streams and the super chat and uh, excuse me, let me get that right. The super thanks of videos like this and the super chat of the live streams that we do pretty much every day of the week. Come join us at the live stream. Leave a question, hit the link, talk to me in person uh, or person to person would be absolutely a a blast to do so. But anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. Let's get into this. So first things first, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford are, according to Derek James, going to be fighting at 154 pounds. So uh, Terrence Crawford is not going to be defending his his undisputed title at 147 pounds in his next fight against Errol Spence. It will just be a fight between the two of them at 154 pounds. That said, that means that Terrence Crawford more than likely will not return to the 147 pound division if he is not going to fight Jerron Ennis. So Jerron Ennis, once that fight is complete between Errol and Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford will more than likely 
go to 154 pounds, and those belts will be vacated. The IBF, the IBF belt more than likely will be vacated, and I do believe that will immediately move uh, Jerron Ennis into the championship position because he is the interim champion. The other belts you have are the WBA belt, where Keith Thurman, I do believe, is fighting Stanionis. That belt, that WBA super belt, will probably go away. And just like it went away at 160 pounds, where Ares Landy Lara holds it, after Gennady Golovkin uh, relinquishes WBA super belt, now the only champion in that division is the WBA world champion. That will most likely happen as well at 100 and uh, 47 pounds for the WBA super super champion, the ter- championship that Terrence Crawford holds. That would leave you with the WBC, who already is having a little bit of a tournament trying to get to the champion, right? And uh, we're in the last fight. I do believe the uh, WBC belt was a uh, fought for. Well, the a uh, interim title fight or a title eliminator fight was. Uh, was um, participated in or held between Mario Barrios and your Danny's Ugas. And then the WBO actually just had a really big upset. Well, not a big upset, and, but an uh, upset that took place between the number one contender there, Alexis Rocha, and um, Centillon, who, who knocked out Rocha. So don't really know what's going on with the WBO there, but... I've heard Centillon is definitely is wanting to get a fight with Mario Barrios for the WBC. So, you know, for sure um, that uh, Terrence Crawford is not going to be in that uh, in that mix of fighters between Santillan, Barrios, Stanionis or Thurman. That's that's I I even agree that that's a little bit below Terrence Crawford's pay grade at this point in time, or what I would even want to see the number one pound for pound fighter in the world do if he is able, and it's not a guaranteed thing if he's able to beat Errol Spence Jr. in that rematch. Now that, however, does completely open the that entire division to Jerron Ennis because I don't think any of those guys are going to beat him, and I think they're all fun fights to watch with. Uh, Jerron Ennis. Unfortunately, as I alluded to in the beginning of this video, there's a problem. And the problem is that uh, that people at 150 at 147 are avoiding fights with Jerron Ennis. The the most recent person to do this, I understand is at least I believe is, and they said that they, the Jay Shooter, when he gave it out, didn't say who it was. He just said that he's not going to, that Jerron is not going to be on the Benavides card because a fourth top, a fourth top welterweight has refused to fight him. Well, who was the fourth top welterweight? After four, after four, you're running into Cody Crowley. After you get past Terrence Crawford, you get to Keith. You get to Keith Thurman. You get to Stanley Onis. Who else is there? It is either going to be Mario Barrios. It's either going to be Mario Barrios. Or it's going to be uh, Cody Crowley. I doubt very much it's Mario Barrios because Mario Barrios literally just came off of a fight, so he wouldn't have been available for that card. The only available person would be Cody Crowley, and Cody Crowley is somebody that is a good fighter, man. He's a fun to watch, a strong fighter, but probably doesn't want to get fed to Boots. So we'll see who, who Boots gets uh, put in the ring with next. But he's that that young man is just 100% stuck out there in everybody ducking a mode. But anyway, just wanted to give you that update. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.